What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to discuss a sample problem involving polarization and its relationship to charges. Okay, so the problem reads, a sphere of radius r carries a polarization equal to this, where k is a constant and r is the vector from the center. Letter A, calculate the bond charges sigma b and rho b, and find the electric field inside and outside the sphere. Okay, so again, we remember that uh, the polarization causes uh, separation of charges in a insulator. Okay, and those charges with are related or are th those uh, accumulation of charges is described by the bound charges sigma b and rho b where sigma b is related to the polarization by this equation where p is the polarization is and n hat is the normal vector normal to your surface whereas rho b is equal to the negative uh, divergence of your polarization. You know, to illustrate, so if this is your uh, sphere, and then uh, let's say the radius, is r okay so if this is your one of the surface okay so we know that this is r as well and your unit vector on this surface is actually equal to r hat and it's the same anywhere on the surface so therefore, so therefore, the bond charge on the surface, sigma b, can now be written as k r r hat. So remember that p r is actually k r r hat, where r vector is just r r hat. Okay. And this is equal to, uh, so this is dot r hat. So r dot r hat is equal to kr. And because these charges are accumulated at the surface of the sphere, okay, so that means r is equal to r so therefore sigma b is equal to k r and this is a constant okay so the accumulated charges due to this polarization on the surface of the, sur of the sphere is equal to k times r and that is a constant now, what about the char the bound charges within the volume? Okay, so again, the polarization is in R hat, so we can use the spherical coordinates. The spherical coordinates, uh, the divergence in spherical coordinates in the R component. Because remember, this divergence and uh, this operator has three components. You have the r hat, theta hat, and p hat. But because the polarization is only along r hat, so therefore the operation along the r is the one that will survive. That means this is you know, equal to negative uh, 1 over r cube. times derivative with respect to r of 
uh, r squared times the r component of your p which is k r okay so this derivative so this is k r cubed and derivative with respect to r and that is equal to 2 k r squared uh, so 3 k r squared so this is now equal to this is equal to 1 over r cubed negative times 3 k r squared so therefore the bound charges within the volume is equal to 3k which is another constant okay so these are the bound charges on the surface and the volume now on the other hand you want to find the uh, field inside and outside the sphere okay so if this is your sphere okay and this is the center so we use gauss law to find the field inside and outside the sphere so the first sphere the first gaussian surface is a sphere the green sphere here and the second bound charge would be at uh, the second calculation of the electric field is outside which is this one okay so this is r now letter b by gauss law so this is e dot d a close integral and that is equal to uh, q and close over epsilon sub zero and we know for a fact that q and close is in the integral of uh, Um, the raw the tau okay so if let's say for r less than r again this is your r for r less than r Q enclosed would be equal to integral of rho, which is your bound charge density inside, and that is a constant. Times theta. Because this is a constant, the integral of d tau, which is over the whole volume, which is basically rho b times v. And what is rho b? That's negative 3k. And then the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Oh, sorry, small r cubed. Okay. So this means okay because we choose the gaussian surface that is symmetrical to our configuration we end up with this illustration so this is e dot times 4 pi r squared where this is the surface area of the your gaussian surface equals q enclosed which is this so that's uh 4 pi k r cube so that's 4 pi k r cube over 
epsilon sub zero. Okay, so canceling uh, the things that we can cancel, so that includes r four and pi. And then two of the r's here, you cancel to the two of the r's here. So we end up with electric field equals negative k over epsilon r r hat. This is the electric field for r less than r. Okay? Easy, right? Now, how about the surface? How about if we have, we choose the outside? Uh, the points outside. Okay? So following this, uh, we now need to know the uh, enclosed charge. So the enclosed charge is in this way. So the total enclosed charge. So if R is greater than R, the total enclosed charge will be the charge on the surface plus the charge within the volume. Because these two are constants, so therefore, this is equal to sigma b times the area of the sphere plus rho b times the volume of the sphere. So we can calculate this, rho, uh, rho b, uh, sigma b is kr times the area of the sphere which is 4 pi r squared plus sigma uh, rho b is negative 3k times the volume of the sphere which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so this is 4 pi k r cubed minus 4 pi k r cubed. Wow! So it cancels. So this should be equal to zero. Which is what we expect actually because uh, we usually uh, uh, assume that an insulator doesn't have a net charge. Okay? So that means the electric field is equal to zero. Four points are greater than the radius of your sphere. Okay? So that's it. So this ends our solution to problem 4.10. I hope you learned something today. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.